I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua today. I want to talk about the expat disease. And no, I don't mean that facetiously or as a funny thing. I actually have a serious topic that I want to help people who are looking at becoming expats to prepare for because it is a real illness that inflicts a lot of people. And expats are specifically a prone to having this happen to them, and often it's something they've already had but are unaware of it, and it does not manifest itself until they become expats. What are we talking about? We're going to find out right after the bump. I know it sounds like we're being funny, but living in a place where we have a lot of expats and it is a place with very low cost of living, very high change in lifestyle over wherever people are coming from in most cases with a very easy access to everything in life, including sunsets and really good food, there is a very high tendency of expats to fall into patterns of alcoholism. And this is very real and something that I would like my audience as much as possible to prepare themselves for. Now, I realize some of you don't drink at all, so you're probably pretty immune. But for a lot of people who may be like, you know, I just have a beer now and then. I, you know, I'm happy with a glass of wine. That's fantastic. I am a beer and wine and rum and whiskey drinker myself. So I totally, I'm there with you and I partake regularly here on the show. So you guys see that. I also work very hard to try to go four or five days per week minimum with no alcohol at all. I don't make it a huge deal. I'm not like going crazy trying to avoid it. But the average day I'm going to go by without a drink. And one of the reasons I want to do that is because it is incredibly easy to fall into a pattern of having very low cost, highly accessible, delicious alcohol. Now, here in Nicaragua, we're exceptionally prone to this due to the incredibly low cost of living and the tropical environs and the really large uh, availability of good alcohol, right? We have Tonya beer, Victoria beer, Moro Potente, we got Flor de Cana rum uh, and access to a lot of other things. It's seltzers everywhere. Um, and it is a cultural thing to go out for drinks. But of course, Nicaraguans have a tendency, while a lot of them go out every night, it's often, uh, pe you know, different groups of people going out different nights. So you may go out and see bars full every night. There's always people out drinking, but it's generally different people in most cases, not the same people seven nights a week, a week because of financial realities that's unlikely to be something to happen. But for expats, it is really common that in moving to a place like Nicaragua, you will discover, and a lot of places are gonna fall into this category, right? Nicaragua is far from being unique in the cost of living, the access to alcohol, the relaxed lifestyle, and the huge change of pace of life from wherever you're coming from. And of course, for some people, moving to a place like Nicaragua coincides with other life changes, such as retirement, uh, as an example. Those things can all be triggers to make you say, well, I, you know, I used to be busy filling my time with my job or busy filling my time with kids. Maybe you're an, uh, moving because you're an empty nester. Uh, you, you no longer have to do certain things, or maybe it's just you used to commute and now you work from home and you have more time, but having more time and generally a lot more money and the cost of alcohol being much lower and a culture where people are out drinking at all hours of the night. If you want to go out at any time here in Nicaragua, you're going to find a party going on. It makes it really, really, really frictionless to slip into a pattern of, well, I'll just have a beer now and I'll start early in the day and I'll go all day. And some people can handle that, but most people cannot. But for a lot of people, it's the first time that they don't have a financial overhead or job overhead or something creating a situation where they're unable to do that. For most Americans, as an example, uh, simply, I have mosquitoes in my face, simply needing to commute uh, alone means that you have to have plenty of sobriety and being in an office generally means you can't drink during the day. Now, I worked in New York for a long time where they encourage you drinking during the day. They'll happily deliver you wine or beer at your desk to keep you there working longer along with your dinner. So that's a little bit of a different culture. But most of the United States is not going to encourage you drinking while you're at work. And you certainly aren't going to drink on your commute in most cases. Uh, and so we have these huge bits of life that generally stop us from drinking a whole lot in the United States. And then when we do go out to the bar just to drink socially, I'm not talking about talking about people who are at home alone. And like, you know, there, there's like hardcore alcoholics in the United States are going to exist already. But here in, in paradise, it is so easy to have simply had a pattern that never had you really drinking. And when you come here, suddenly it's so just 
easy to drink all the time that why wouldn't you? Well, I'm sitting on the beach. I'm enjoying the sunset. Wouldn't it be nicer with a beer? It would be nicer with a beer. Wouldn't you like to have a beer with your, your shrimp dinner? Well, I would. That sounds great. I don't have to drive because everything's so cheap here. I'm able to hire a taxi or a private driver or I can walk places because everything is so much closer. Even where I live out here, I can easily walk to the local bar and have a drink and walk home. So it's completely different than where I lived in the United States, anywhere that I lived in the United States. I couldn't walk to the bar and walk home. I couldn't easily have drinks all throughout the day, but here in Nicaragua, I can. And so when you can, you may not have built up the skills uh, or the patterns of life when living somewhere that was a lot more difficult to drink all the time, even if just the cost of drinking was much higher. You have all these factors that's like, well, I can't, I can't really spend that much on another beer. $8 for another beer? No, I'm good with just one, thanks, right? It's easy to say no when the cost is so high, but when your next beer is delicious and $1, maybe $1.25, it's kind of hard to say no, especially when people buy them in big, you know, you get, we call them uh, cubes here. I don't know why they're called cubes. They come in a bucket with ice. It's like six beers in a bucket with ice. It's like, well, we're going to get six or we're going to get a liter. Oh, we're going to get a big bottle of rum and split it with the table. All these kinds of things that encourage kind of party drinking. And, and a lot of people are here drinking quite a bit. Even the locals drink quite a bit. That is normal, but uh, for, for expats who have been living a life, oh, these mosquitoes are getting really bad all of a sudden, have been living a life where that's not something they've had to deal with, it can be a really big problem to suddenly be introduced to it. It's much like college students having a lifetime of never being able to have access to alcohol, going to university, and suddenly one day having miraculous access to loads and loads of alcohol, it tends to encourage binge drinking. Now, you don't tend to get binge drinking here in Nicaragua, but you do tend to get people who are suddenly able to drink casually for long periods of time, and you may not realize how much alcohol you're, you're starting to consume because it's a little bit at a time just over really long periods of time. Simple little things like every restaurant offering alcohol, the cost being low, not needing to drive much of the time, having your fridge just always stocked in a corner store that's always going to sell you things, and being able to get alcohol anytime, day or night, and every single venue you go to always selling it adds up to just making it frictionless. It is a fluid process, pun not intended, to end up with an awful lot of alcohol availability and having all the free time that most expats experience when they come to Nicaragua just leaves you with a need to fill it. And now, how do you combat this? Well, one way is simply being conscious of the fact that this is likely to happen for the majority of you. This is something to be aware of. And now maybe you're moving to paradise because you just want that and that I want to be able to drink all day. That is my goal. Great own that, right? Be aware, consciously make that decision, and that's fine. But for a lot of people, you need to be aware that this is a pattern that is almost guaranteed to affect you if you drink. If you don't drink, you're safe. But if you do drink and suddenly this pattern changes and you have a change of lifestyle to go with it, which is practically guaranteed, it is best to be aware that you have a very high tendency, simply by being an expat with a change of life, moving to a new place, that you are going to have this trend of, well, there I have extra time. I have, it just, it's going to happen. So being aware, consciously making a, a decision to say, well, this is not something I want to fall into a pattern of. I need to be aware of it. That's one piece. Another piece is probably finding activities to keep you busy. For a lot of expats, they come down and they realize that kind of the retirement vibe, it may not actually be retirement. It may be just not commuting, maybe working shorter hours. It may be actually retiring and having no plans going on. These things may leave you with so much time that you're not sure how to fill them. And the obvious things coming from the United States that are just accessible to you are going to be alcohol and television. It's going to be very easy to simply turn on the TV, kick your feet up and have a drink. And then we say, well, you know, you should go out. That's the Nicaragua thing. And that's great. But what do you do when you go out? Typically, you go out and drink. You may go out and dance, which is great. Sweat some of it off. But you're probably going to be drinking when you do that. Everyone else is. So why wouldn't you, even if you didn't want to, you're going to feel pressure because everybody else is, you know how it is. And so you're not going to be like, I'm going to drink a whole bunch. You're going to have one, but you drink one, you get thirsty. You know how it is, right? It's hot here. That also encourages drinking a lot more drinking of anything. It could be smoothies or water and, and, you know, consciously drink more water that will help as well.
For a lot of people, I think part of the gap that they run into is that they don't have hobbies that they're prepared to move into when they get to their new country. It could be Nicaragua, it could be anywhere. It could be that you used to do model railroading and now you can't, or you used to do just whatever and that's now missing from your life. It's not easily accessible, or it is accessible, but you haven't thought of recreating it once you get here. So think about things you may want to do before you make a move and plan for that. It could be, or do you want to be painting, right? It just doesn't have to be something big. You want to be painting, you want to be writing a novel, you want to be learning a new skill, you want to learn a new language, you want to uh, fix cars, you want to, you know, do pottery, you want to take classes, you want to do things online, you want to get into cooking, you want to, you name the hobby that, that piques your interest and prepare for that or mentally be ready that, okay, I just, all I want to do is take some cooking classes. Like I really want to, I want to start making homemade spaghetti or homemade pasta, right? And, 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 and scratch made sauces. And I just want to be able to cook and have like really, really good food in, in the house. And I want to spend time and I want to upgrade my kitchen. Great. Think about that ahead of time before you move. And when you get here, immediately start putting that into action. Instead of going, I'm bored today. I'm just going to have a beer and sit on the beach, which is amazing that that is open to us. Use that still as an escape from your day-to-day -day rather than your day-to-day -day if you're trying to avoid ending up with way too much alcohol without realizing it. And that's really the biggest thing. It is so easy to end up with so much alcohol in you without ever actually realizing that you're doing it. Your pocketbook is probably not going to notice. Your schedule is probably not going to notice all the triggers, all the protections that you've probably had in your past life. Now, some people have managed to drink like that before they move. So that doesn't count for everybody. But there's generally, I know in my own life, there's so many things that made it very difficult to go out and drink on a regular basis. Cost, time, driving, location, you name it. All of those things went away for me and all those things went away for basically everyone that I know here. And a lot of people managed to not become alcoholics, but the risk is there. The, the tendency for expats to move into that pattern is very, very high, especially if you don't have friends when you first move. One of the things you're likely to do, and this makes sense and I do encourage it, is you're likely to go to bars and restaurants and, and clubs and use and, and, and beach locations and alcohol is part of that scene. It is a social lubricant. It is a healthy thing to go out, have a few drinks, meet new people, make new friends, and, and, and you know, be social. It's really good for us as humans to do those things. So that's fantastic. It's just important to be aware of how much, when you're, when you're new to a place, that that is going to often proxy for other things in your life. And you can very easily end up filling your time, your activities or whatever, using alcohol to do that. And I don't, I don't want people to fall into that pattern. So this is kind of a public service announcement, but you know, as expats, this is something that no one talks about. No one preps people that this is going to be a thing. We all, when we're gonna become expats, we're like, I wanna lay on the beach. I want to have a beer, right? I'm going to have pina coladas and chill in the sand. And when you're coming from a vacation mindset, oh, I heard about the beach in Mexico. What do you do in Cabo? Psh, get wasted. What do you do in Cancun? Lay on the beach and drink. All inclusive. All inclusive resorts. Oh, you got to drink all day to get your money's value, right? You name it. That's what we think about. Come to Nicaragua as a tourist. What's the number one thing to do? Sit on the beach and drink. Number two thing to do, go to the distillery tour, right? Number three thing to do, go on a cigar or chocolate, you know, discovery tour. Okay, that's great. But, but you see the trend, right? All these things are great in moderation, but when it becomes the mindset, and yes, now you're an expat, not a tourist, but those tourist things are often hanging out in there in your mind. And so when you come down, it, those are going to manifest in many cases. And, and it just all snowballs if you're not careful. And, uh, so I, I, I want my audience to be mentally prepared for how to keep themselves healthy uh, and, and end up resulting in the lifestyle that you actually want and not just the one that you fall into. Uh, and I think you'll be happier and healthier for having done so. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, right up there. You can buy me a coffee at the link we show up there or down in the description at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. You can also join our channel. We have this awesome little community of members. There's a little join button right there that allows you to uh, commit to a little, a very small monthly amount to help make the channel possible. Thank you so much to all of our members and, and coffee buyers. You make this channel possible. And as always, get down there in the comments, uh, say hello, ask your questions, let me know what you think, all that stuff, all that interaction, talk to each other. And uh, live shows, uh, we try to do every Thursday. We work really hard at that. Almost every Thursday, we make that for those who want to see that. And uh, as always, I'll see all of you tomorrow.